We're now joined by Baylor guard Dijanae Carrington. We'll go straight to questions. Mandy Knight from Fox 44. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Dijanae. Uh, obviously, in a game like this, when it comes down to the wire and maybe you don't feel like that you didn't necessarily, you guys didn't lose the game on your own. It potentially came down to a maybe a controversial call. How do you deal with that mentally as an athlete when something like that happens, when it very well could have been a foul called and, you know, you go to the free throw line? I mean, I personally don't see it as a controversial call. I've already seen the replay and one girl fouled me in my face and one girl, girl fouled me on my arm. So at that point, you can't do anything else. We drew up a play. Liz got fouled posting up, and I got fouled driving, so nothing we could really do about that situation in particular. But, you know, turn the page. Our next question comes from Jerry Hill. Unmute your microphone and ask your question. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Dijanae, um, when Dee Dee went out um, with the hamstring injury, they went on a big run to take the lead. How did you guys kind of, you know, flip the switch and get back in it? I mean, obviously, you can never account for injuries happening. So that was tough for us. And Sarah got thrown into the fire, you know, freshman in a big game. Um, I don't know. We we just tried to weather the storm. We can't we've always had things thrown at us this whole season and just had to play through them and battle. And that's what we did. We never gave up. We never thought that we were out of it. Our next question comes from Chris. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Dijanae, obviously a, a great game from you today and a great season from you. Maybe it's too soon for you to know, but can you just talk about how special the one year you did get in Waco has been? I mean, it was very special, and it's a shame that it's cut short. Um, but I absolutely have enjoyed my time here thus far and uh, learned a lot about the game, learned a lot about myself. And I think I grew as a player and a person, and that's all you can really ask for. Um, they welcomed me with open arms, and Coach Mulkey let me be free and let me just play how I know I can play. Our next question comes from Chad. Go ahead. Chad Conine, Waco Tribune Herald. Dijanae, um, they kind of threw the first punch tonight, got out by 12 early. What was the key to you guys battling back from that? Um... I mean, they were scoring in transition. They weren't scoring on us really too much in the half court. We knew that we had to guard the three-point line a little bit better. They got hot in the beginning, uh, and we had to get back in transition. But I think once I came in, I was able to bring us a little bit of a spark on offense, and uh, we got going in transition a little bit too. So that helped. Again, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function now. I'll ask a question. Just talk about the crowd that you guys had here tonight. Obviously, you've had a season where you haven't had fans. Um, talk about how great it was and how they helped you guys with the game. Um, I mean, we love our Lady Bear fans, and we definitely had a great crowd here today. They helped us when we were up. They helped us when we were down. And it sucks to have let them down in a sense, but I don't know. It, it's just such a tough – it's a tough way to end, end a game. Um, really frustrating. Pictures don't lie. Film don't lie. And it's just a shame that they're not able to see us play anymore out here. So. Our next question comes from Doug. Go ahead. Hey, Dejanay. Doug Feinberg, the Associated Press. Great game tonight. I'm sorry about the ending. Just talk about your guys' defensive effort. After that first quarter, you seemed to lock in, and you especially had a great block or two and a steals. Just talk about the defensive effort you guys had tonight. That's what we've been built on all season. Um, that's what Coach Moki has built this program on is defense. And in the beginning, as we already discussed, we weren't locked into the defensive uh, schemes and things like that. So, you know, we talked about it and we just knew play harder. We got to play harder. Play like this is, could be your last game you ever play in your life. So I think people just locked into that. Next question, Jerry Hill, go ahead. Uh, Dijanae, I know y'all kind of rotated different players on her, but can you talk about Paige Beckers and just, um, you were able to stay with her pretty well, but she just uh, she just found ways to get open, I guess. 
uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess. She's a good player, really good player. Um, I thought Didi was doing a great job on her. And when Didi went down with the injury, other people had to step up, including myself. Um, she got a few buckets on me. Uh, and obviously, wish she hadn't, but she's a great player, and great players are going to score. So just keep playing hard. Our next question comes from Chad. Go ahead. Chad Conan, Waco Tribune Herald. Dijanae, were their front court players, their interior players, were they, um, you know, did they have a combination of uh, size and athletic ability that's maybe different than anybody you guys have played this year so far? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, everybody knows UConn's a good team. Uh, I think our front court players are just as lengthy and just as athletic as theirs. So, we, I, I mean, we go against that every day in practice. Uh, so, yeah. Our next question comes from Lindsay with USA Today. Go ahead. Hey, T. Shanae, Lindsay Schnell from USA Today. Um, I just wondered, you know, you're going to get this year back. Have you thought about coming back and playing another year in Waco? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm, I'm, haven't made my mind up exactly of what I'm going to do. I've just been focused on this season completely, locked into this season and not worried about uh, tomorrow, you know. It says in the Bible to worry about today because today has enough troubles of its own and tomorrow we'll, we'll worry about tomorrow. So that's really where my head has been the whole season is just worrying about the here and the now. Um, but after this, I'll, you know, talk with the coaches, talk with my family and talk with God and make a decision. Dijanae, thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. We'll next hear from head coach Kim Mulkey. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function now. We are now joined with head coach Kim Mulkey. Our first question will come from Lindsay. Lindsay, go ahead. Hi, Kim. Lindsay Schnell from USA Today. Uh, tremendous season, first of all. What did you draw up in the huddle? Um, and what did you see when Dijon drove the ball from where you were standing? What did you see? I was surprised they didn't call a foul. Then write it like that. You don't need a quote from me. I've got steel shots and video from two angles. One kid hits her in the face and one kid hits her on the elbow. And she was one of the options, if you're wanting to know what I drew up. One option was for Nalissa and the second option was for her. Our next question will come from Mandy Knight. Go ahead. Hey coach, Mandy Knight. Fox 44, um, we just obviously got done speaking with Carrington and she says tape doesn't lie about what you could see on that call. So uh, you can't change the end of this game, how it ended, but is there something that can be done in the future about a review or something when a play like that happens that obviously can impact the final game score? It'll never happen. It doesn't matter. Oh, uh, well, we missed the call. Well, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you write. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what we saw. It doesn't matter what we think. Life goes on. The next question will come from Chad. Go ahead. Chad Conine, Waco Tribune Herald. Um, Kim, can you speak to the impact of Dee Dee having to leave the game with the injury? Did she think she could come back? You know, and was it just immediately obvious that, that she wasn't going to be able to be able to go? Were we up about ten at that point? I think we were up double figures at that point when she went down, and I knew it had to be a hamstring because that's what she grabbed, and um, swung the whole momentum. Her injury—I'm so tired of injuries. Lauren Cox's injury in the national championship game, and we hung on and won that. Uh, injuries are impactful. Injuries are impactful through the course of the year, but you have time to make it up. You don't have time to make it up in a game. And we went from being up 10 and a chance to extend the lead. Uh, you're on a roll. you got all momentum in your favor. And um, that, that changed 
the momentum, obviously. Anybody that watched it did. I was proud of our team. Uh, they kept fighting. And all you can do is ask for the opportunity to win it at the end. And I thought, we, what else could I do? All I can do is put it in the hands of two kids we think that can get fouled or score the ball. And guys, y'all can write the rest of the story. Our next question comes from Doug Kleinberg with AP. Go ahead. Uh, Doug Farmer with the AP. Just talk about uh, Dijanae's game today. I mean, she she played so well for you, and obviously the one play at the end, but just how well she played for you in this obviously huge stage. She's a big-time player. Um, just so grateful that I got to coach her, and um, she stepped up big time uh, for us, not just in this game, but all year long. And um, I thought she's pretty special out there myself. Our next question comes from Chris Williams. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Chris Williams, KDBTX News 10 here in Waco. Um, you've talked a lot this season about how every team and every run is unique. And I know you don't want this year and this team to be remembered by the way that game ended. So how would you say this team should be embodied and remembered moving forward? Talented. Big 12 championship um, tournament championship and regular season um, very much final four national championship worthy they're as good as anybody that's left um, I would say unfortunate things happened through the course of the year uh, the six cancellations the six cancellation of games the six games that were canceled, I'm sorry, because of COVID, four of those six would have been against ranked opponents. Um, and I feel like it was held against us. At some point, when you have the circumstances that we do, um, you need to do the eye test to see who deserves the number one seeds. I thought we were worthy of a number one seed, and I'll say it now. We didn't harp on it, but... Um, you know, I think Gino said it yesterday or day before in his press conference. Um, we can't control the COVID situation. I think a gutsy performance out there today by a lot of kids when you lose the National Defensive Player of the Year playing against the player of the year that some people think. And I thought um, if she had not gotten hurt, I really, I really, well, you saw the game. The next question comes from Jerry Hill. Go ahead. Jerry Hill, Baylor Barry Insider. Kim, you touched on it a little bit, but the I guess the resiliency of this team, because, I mean, you guys got down 12 real early in the game, and then even in that fourth quarter, y'all got down nine and had a chance to win. Yeah, resiliency, you can use that word. I think it's just very good. I think we're a very good basketball team. Don't get rattled. Um, just – keep battling and guard people and um, I mean really guys we, we, we lose D.D. Richards when you're up double figures and you still have a chance at the end to win it, win it um, when momentum shifted um, we didn't get to the foul line in the second half very much um, you know and I'll, I want to say this to all of you I don't think my words will matter, but after the games today and tomorrow, there's four teams left, I think, on the men's side and the women's side. They need to dump the COVID testing. Wouldn't it be a shame to keep COVID testing and then you got kids that end up having test positive or something and they don't get to play in the final four? So you need to just forget the, sh the, the, the COVID test and let the four teams that are playing in each final four go battle it out. Our next question comes from Andrew Miner. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Yeah, Coach, uh, when I was just wondering if you could touch on the performance of uh, both Melissa and Queen tonight, uh, just on the glass and, and their presence inside defensively and offensively um, and, and how well they, they did for you guys. I hadn't seen the stat sheet, to be honest with you. I don't even know what their stats are. I um, I just know that every kid that played um, gave it 
you know, everything they had. And um, actually, I'm looking at it now. Uh, you know, Nalissa was with a double-double. Uh, you know, Queen, almost a double-double. I thought they battled. I thought there were opportunities, um, you know, early where, you know, they were their height inside uh, bothered us a little bit, altered shots, we missed shots, but you just keep figuring out ways to score and, and um, they, they competed tonight. Um, got to the offensive boards, each of them had four offensive rebounds. So very, very um, similar stats. I, I thought we took care of the ball in the first half, and that's what got you back in the game when you went down early is you didn't turn the ball over, and they had like eight turnovers, you know, in the first half. But, you know, guys, the whole story of the game is D.D. Richards goes down and the whole momentum shifted, okay? So you think at that point your team could fold their tent. You got a freshman that you're putting in there that, you know, hadn't been on this big stage, and – you know, I'm sure she was nervous, and we got to build her up and make her feel good. But I, I thought, you know, all you can do is coach to the bitter end and give yourself an opportunity. And boys and girls, it would have been fun to see Dejanay to go to that foul line right there. Coach, thank you for your time this evening. Congratulations on a great season. Recently announced the all-tournament team for the Riverwalk region. Most outstanding player, Beige, Paige Becker from UConn, Dijanae Carrington Baylor, Caitlin Clark, Iowa, Melissa Smith Baylor, and Kristen Williams, UConn. That concludes the press conference. A recording of this press conference will be in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.